Hello YouTube and welcome back to ASX Portfolio. Today we're going to be talking about modern portfolio theory. Now you probably would have heard of this. Um, it's whenever someone brings up risk versus reward, essentially they're referring to this theory in 1951 called modern portfolio theory. So um, without further ado, let's jump into it. So this theory was um, devised by Harry Markowitz um, and it was first published in the Journal of Finance in 1952 um, in, as portfolio selection. Now, the main aspect of his paper and where he deserves most of the credit is in two things. One, portfolio risk and how he views that, and two, diversification. And without further ado, let's jump into the formal definition that I found on Investopedia. So, modern portfolio theory, MPT, is a theory on how risk-adverse investors can construct portfolios to maximise expected return based on a given level of market risk. Okay, well, so we, we got a couple of key words in there. We got maximising expected return based on um, your investor's risk. Okay, so that's something we've heard about all the time. You have a risk um, appetite as an investor and you wanna maximize your return. That's fair enough to say, but how do you go about doing that? We've got a potential asset, um, let's call it uh, Commonwealth Bank Australia, which is on the ASX. So there's a potential risk associated with purchasing this asset and there's also an associated reward. Now this comes into, this comes into the fact of what are risk and reward. Well, let's define it numerically, okay? Let's actually put a value to it and we can do this by calling the reward expectation, okay? And this is something that we can actually calculate. And variance. So one of the most important things in this aspect is diversification. Now, we'll go into specifically what I'm talking about here and that is covariance between assets. So if you don't know what it is, that's okay. We're going to explain it simply here. So essentially, what do we know from our asset? So again, let's say that we have the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. Um, essentially, we have to estimate this potential future distribution of returns going out into the future. So obviously, we don't know what this stock is going to return to us into the future, okay? If we did, that would be fantastic. Essentially, we could draw up our distribution as you see in this diagram. We would know the expectation by taking the weighted sum of all the probabilities and the returns, and we would know the variance of the distribution or how risky the stock is. So based off this, we could work out whether we wanted to hold that asset for that potential return given the level of risk. And again, the level of risk is something you as the investor get to choose. However, this isn't the case. We don't know what the future um, stock distribution is going to be. So we have to estimate this. And how it is estimated usually is based off historical pricing, okay? So we use the expectation formula. We take the summation of all the market returns with some kind of weight. Usually this is one. We, we weight all the previous time periods equally. But it is important to note that you can weight it and you divide it by the total amount of time periods. So the variance is also pretty important. So the variance is just, um, and it's specifically related to how far the asset price has moved from that mean. So now on to diversification. So there's two main components here. There's diversifiable risk and non-diversifiable risk. So let's just talk about a little bit what they are. Non-diversifiable risk is systematic risk, okay? So this refers to the risk that it's inherent into the entire market or the market segment. So there's just nothing you can do about it. There's no possible way that you can go about um, diversifying away this uh, potential risk that's underlying in the market. For example, with the virus, um, you know, if, if, if every asset class is going down as a consequence of risk um, appetite and, and adversity um, to loss, then everything's going down. Um, there's not much you can do about that. But there's another type of risk which 
is diversifiable and this is called unsystematic risk and this is the risk that is inherent um, to a specific company or industry and I think this is this is easiest to explain with who was hit the hardest which sector um, or one of the sectors that were hit the hardest during this uh, epidemic um, with the virus is the airline industries so obviously some industries and companies um, they they can vary away from what the market's doing quite substantially and and this is unsystematic risk and it can be diversified so let's talk about how you go about getting this diversification um, you know you, I, i'm sure you've already thought about it um, or heard on the grapevine all you need to do is buy some bitcoin get some ETFs together, I'm going to be invested in the banks, I'm going to be invested in commodities, whatever that means. I'm going to be buying consumer staples, I'm going to be purchasing some manufacturing, I've got some energy in my portfolio, and you know what, I don't understand them, but I'm going to buy some bonds. Now, you've probably heard this in terms of all the different asset classes and I'm going to diversify. That is not what this actually means. Diversification here in the modern portfolio theory is actually about covariance and correlation. So let's talk about what this is. Look, I've got the formulas there just to try and explain it. If you have two assets, um, for example, the graph in the green and the graph in the red, okay, what, what you're aiming for here is to understand the correlation between these assets. So over the same time periods, let's just say stock I and stock J, how do they perform with relative to each other? Now, a highly correlated asset, um, as for the green chart you can see and the S&P uh, 200, that looks very correlated to me. I don't need to do any numbers, but we, we can if we want, um, to try and find out that the correlation is very close to one. They move together. So you can see there, as the pandemic hit, then they both went down together. Whereas the graph in red, um, you know, it followed a different trajectory based off other market fundamentals. Now, essentially, you can go worrying about what those market fundamentals here, but um, for the purpose of this theory, it's about understanding that there is a covariance between asset I and asset J, and depending on how that is, um, can, can affect how diversified you are. So this is pretty important, uh, diversification versus return. So let's just say we've got asset one here and asset two. Um, do I have to pick asset two just because it's going down the same time as asset one's going up? You know, what, why, why would I try to pick a losing stock just to get this thing called diversification? Well, essentially that's not how you go about it. It is an optimization problem. So given a number of assets in your portfolio, not just one, with estimated returns, variances, and covariances, the variance between them, in my portfolio, I want to choose my weightings in each asset as to maximize my return, okay? While minimizing my variance, I want to choose weightings in my portfolio towards these assets, so 10% for this stock, 20% for this stock, based on maximizing my expected return and minimizing my variance. So how do I go about doing that? So essentially, all you need to do, super simple, solve the quadratic programming problem uh, below using Lagrange multipliers and you're done, easy. Now, obviously I'm joking because it's not as easy as it thinks to try and implement that model, but let's just talk it through, okay? Um, Portfolio variance is what you want to minimize. And that's what the top statement says. That's your objective function, to minimize the variance of the portfolio. The bottom constraints um, are subject to, um, essentially the first line there is your portfolio return. You're just saying, I would like a portfolio above this mu B, above a certain level. For example, it might be 10% uh, for you as an investor. And then the last constraint there is just making sure that all your weightings add up to one. That you're not just gonna have 10% of your portfolio in, in one asset and then this, you know, this formula doesn't show you anything for the others. So we're gonna jump into the app that I've made 
Um, so you don't need to go ahead and start coding uh, this model on your own. So I've jumped onto my website here, ASX Portfolio, if you haven't been to it before. And all you have to do is log in, uh, set up an account, it's free, and then click this My Portfolio button here. And it'll bring you straight to the Portfolio Optimization tool. So you can read through the details, but it's pretty simple. You're just going to pick a date range for the historical time periods that you want to estimate the return and volatility and covariances over. So you choose your portfolio of ASX stocks. Let's say we want to add Qantas in there. Date range I'm happy with. And then we press calculate. Now, I want to say that it is going to take some time to crunch your portfolio results um, because of how many simulations are having to happen. Um, but you can note that in the top left hand corner, you should see the updating button and when the page is responsive, then it will have worked, like just then. So, optimized ASX portfolio. So, we've got something called the max sharp ratio portfolio, so the highest reward versus risk, and then we've got min volatility portfolio, so the least volatile. So, essentially, I'll explain the graph in a second, but these two points and these two portfolios from the stocks that you've chosen in that time period, it's estimated that your maximum reward for the amount of risk you're taking is going to be 18.1% over that time period with a volatility of 18.2%. So the Sharp Ratio is just the return divided by the volatility. And it says that the percentage of your portfolio should be 51% in BHP, zero in CBA, 49% in Qantas. So we're, we're gonna get into that um, down below and we'll see a little bit more. Now the min volatility obviously has a much lower sharp ratio. So a much lower return, um, but it does have a lower volatility. And you can see your percentage splits here. So this diagram and specifically this black line is called the efficient frontier. So essentially all of these portfolios have been randomly selected with different percentages and the black line is for a certain amount of risk, what is my maximum return? So you can see here at the bottom, I've got that green circle which highlights where we have the minimum volatility portfolio and where we have the max sharp ratio. Now you can see the max sharp ratio is quite a while away from all these points. That's because in each of these points that I've generated for illustrative purposes, I've never put 0% allocation for one of the stocks. Whereas how I'm generating this efficient frontier line, I am allowing the optimization to let that occur. So, Let's look at what else we can see. I've printed out the correlations here just so you can get a better feel about um, how these covariances relate to each other. And I can see here that um, CBA, you know, is you know pretty much um, no correlation whatsoever to uh, Woodside Petroleum. And um, yeah, you can just play around here and see if something's really negatively correlated or if it's very positively correlated like CBA and Telstra here. The annualized uh, returns and volatilities, this is pretty useful because you can just quickly come down here and see, okay, well, what was the return over the time period that I placed up here, the date range? Um, of these stocks and, and maybe it gives a little bit more insight into why the max sharp ratio portfolio or the min volatility portfolio is telling you to do what it's doing. Now let's go back to the max sharp ratio um, portfolio where we had 51% in BHP and 49% in Qantas. Well essentially we're getting the highest return here for volatility and I can see that there. They're pretty similar sharp ratios whereas CBA over the same period was really insignificant in comparison to how much volatility we're going to take on. 
And for, you know, for example, Westpac, um, for a lower volatility of 18.8, I don't want to take on a negative, um, negative return. So you can see here that the highest um, return for volatility is a weighted sum of BHP and Qantas, where we have very high returns for the risk. Whereas these down here are composed into the min volatility because they have a reduced um, annualized volatility, they add to the diversification of the min volatility portfolio. So in summary, you can come in here, throw out whatever portfolio of assets you want, back test it with different dates, see, see uh, what the date ranges does to change it. I prefer just typing in the dates here and away you go. So to summarize, what is modern portfolio theory? Modern portfolio theory is all about risk versus reward and about how you can diversify your portfolio to maximize your expected return. So it is a bit of a complex optimization problem, a quadratic problem, uh, optimization problem, but I have built an app and you guys can use it at my website. So if you enjoyed the video guys, please go ahead and hit the like button. It took me a while to code up that app, so I'd really appreciate it. And um, yeah, go ahead and use it out. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment in the section below.